sent me to Los Angeles mm -hmm. and uh, put me in Big Blue on the, in the Big Blue building complex. That And uh, I get to LA, Scott was going to go on to the RPF. Mm -hmm. And um, in order for him to get through it successfully, I needed to go on it as well. Wow. So <laughs> I said, well, how do I do that? I mean, I'm not on the RPF. Mm -hmm. You know, I'll get him through it. Not a problem. I'll be his twin. She goes, well, you need to be on the RPF in order to be on helping him on the RPF. I'm like, okay, sign me up. <laughs> you know, my whole concern was that he was going to survive. So I agree. And uh, she put the le the most less offensive things on it for me. So that was really nice. You, were, you had heard that the RPF, Rehabilitation Project Force, was mm -hmm. grim. So this was, this was very brave and courageous of you. <laughs> Right onto the RPF. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, I ran onto the RPF and still no contact with him whatsoever. <clears throat> the complex was actually the old Cedars of Lebanon Hospital. Mm -hmm. So uh, it was an old hospital building that the church took over back in the 70s. Um, and uh, they kept me in an area underneath the uh, uh, section of the uh, building called Lebanon Hall. And uh, it was down in the bowels, uh, the subterranean levels underneath the building, uh, in the old medical waste incinerator room. Yeah, I wasn't, I wasn't allowed to see him. Mm -hmm. I'd go past there every now and again because I wanted to find out where exactly he was located. And they say he's locked up in this room. The the room itself was, uh, you know, cinder block and brick. Uh, and it still had the old uh, brick medical waste incinerator. And it had a big steel clad door that was on rails. And, and uh, you know, they had me in there and they closed the door and crash. And, uh, you, were you know, locked put in. a padlock. There is um, at least one or two people uh, outside of where he was at all times. Yeah. Would you pound I tried on to, the walls and Yeah, scream? pound on the wall, scream, let me out of here. And then I heard it through the door as well. I want to leave, I want to leave. You know, I, I don't want to be here anymore. And um, I was like, okay, fine. So we, I went on to the RPF's RPF. <laughs> which is the lowest of the low. You can't even talk to the RPF. You know, it's the same thing, but it's More worse. and more punishment. Escalate well, the punishment. Yeah, you get Escalate. up earlier. You less take sleep. less sleep, less eating time, running full blast. You're doing stuff that nobody else wants to do. I had lost uh, about 60 pounds during this time. Whatever was being given to me, the diazepam, chlorohydrate, that continued. That prescription was continued by Megan Shields. And right on the bottle, there's a big warning that says, uh, you know, warning exceeding this dose in this period of time can cause severe brain damage. Mm -hmm. You know. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking, well, these guys have been giving these things to me like it's candy. You know, they would send this woman in to do the security checks on me. What did she look like? She was uh, like the Nazi, <laughs> basically the, you know, Dr. Mengele's medical assistant, you know. <laughs> and she's interrogating me and, uh, you know, uh, uh, being interrogated with... Sample uh, questions? You know, the questions are like, uh, are you here to destroy the Church of Scientology? Are you here to destroy David Miscavige? Are you with the CIA? You know, it's just rapid fire questions one after the other and she's supposed to be noting whatever these questions are reading, you know. I noticed one time that she was doing something as she's asking me the question. I noticed her arm is moving a little bit, you know. 
getting these questions, you're connected to an e-meter, which is essentially a lie detector type device. Mm -hmm. And I could feel the electrical pulse in the cans getting stronger and weaker, which was odd. And I noticed that she was moving the range of the electrical to fake resistance. Reads. That's faking the read. And I was like, what in the hell are you doing? And I, you know, I, got, I got very angry and I just knocked the whole thing off the table, knocked the table over and everything. And then the, the door came crashing open and they got her out of there and stuff. And Sea Org members at the bottom of the food chain in right. the thought reform camp, they take you up to the roof? They took me up to the roof and uh, just took me over to the edge of the, the roof and I'm looking down with them and you know, I get the feeling that these guys are like, go ahead, jump, we don't care, you know. And one of the guys says, it's a long way down, you know, and I was upset by that and I said you don't know anything about me you don't know anything about me do you they took me right back up to the roof now mind you this is at like three o'clock in the morning two three o'clock in the morning middle of the night take me up to the roof walk me over to the edge of that building and I'm looking down look in the down same the place concrete. And the guy said the same thing. It's a long way down. That is shocking. And, you know, it, it, something just clicked in me and I just said, yep, it's a long way down. Is that why we're up here? Is that what we're doing? What are we doing? It's a nice night, isn't it? Look at the stars. And after that, I wouldn't let them do anything more with me. Every time anybody would come to see me or try to interact with me at all, I would just say, I want to route out, I want to leave, I want to get out of here, let me out of here. Just over and over again, I would repeat that. Uh, finally, after probably a couple of months, mm -hmm. they let me leave and uh, let Carrie leave at the same time. And, uh, you know, I was still a wreck. You know, I was just skin and bones. Mm -hmm. I had lost all my muscle mass. Uh, and I'm six foot two, and I think I weighed like 158 pounds. <laughs> you know, they let us go. And, and, and you know, it was the whole videoed, uh, oh, you know, signing all of the- They made uh, you go on video to video sign. Video, sign the release of liabilities. We're here in, in a serious matter, on a serious matter. We're here to uh, formalize the signing of uh, an agreement uh, and general release uh, between uh, Debbie Cook and uh, Church of Scientology, FSO. Chiefs and chiefs of documents. Yes, this is the famous you one know, inch thick sign your life yes, away. They never everything. did anything wrong. Sign! Yeah. Sign how good, what good guys and, they are. And yeah. Mm. And uh, we get to sign all these papers. And I'm like, are we supposed to read this stuff? You know, I'm like, I want out of here. I'm sorry. And his gut, he's like totally out of it. He's like a vegetable. I was a wreck. Yeah. You know, I would love to see that video because it would be it's this guy who's like physically, mentally, and emotionally destroyed. Yeah. Then we get there to Carrie's parents' house, and they're like, oh my God, what's, mm -hmm. what's happened to Scott, you know? Mm -hmm. So uh, they caused a, a problem by writing reports and sending them to the church officials. And uh, the church says, okay, we'll, we'll fix it. We know what to do now. Bring him back. <laughs> so they convinced Carrie's parents and Carrie, my wife, to bring me back. How did to you the, feel about to the back? How did you feel? Well, I was terrified. Mm -hmm.